Welcome into week three, and we have a matchup that we don't get very often. Number four, Alabama at Wisconsin. And here to help us break down one of the biggest games of the weekend is Mike Rodak from Bama 24-7 and Nick Osen from Badger 24-7. And let's tell you about this matchup that we have not gotten since 2015. And Alabama was the winner of that neutral site game, 35-17. And both teams actually come in with very impressive records in this kind of setting. Alabama is 122-1 and against unranked opponents with 22 straight wins, while Wisconsin 51-2 in its last 53 non-con home games. So both teams have won in this setting quite a bit, but only one team is going to come out on top. And I mentioned that this is not a game we get often. Guys, this is not a trip that Alabama makes often. They last played in Madison in 1928. I can confidently say that nobody involved in this game was alive then. So what are our expectations for this road environment? And I want to hear from both of you, but let's start with Nick to kick us off. Absolutely, Emily. This should be one of the best environments that we've really seen at Camp Randall in a long time. Like you mentioned, it's a matchup specifically that we don't get to see often. It's an SEC school coming up here. It's Bama, one of the biggest brands. And, you know, I can tell you firsthand uh, fans around here in Madison, throughout the state, really just throughout the Midwest, are really pumped for this one. I made a quick recent stop uh, to my hometown recently, just about a week or two ago. People were already buzzing about this one. I, I think when you add on, you know, kickoff pregame show, it's early, but the weather's been perfect in Madison recently. Just kind of the, you know, the excitement about the team. Maybe the team hasn't hit its stride quite yet. So an opportunity to do that, really reach its ceiling. They're selling alcohol now at Camp Randall. <laughs> so I think the students here in Madison and, and really the general population are going to be buzzing for this one this weekend. Mike, what's it going to be like when Alabama enters an environment that they're not used to? Yeah, I mean, it's certainly different. Um, obviously, it's it's going north for Alabama. There are a decent amount of players on Alabama that have transferred in. And so you have players that have experience playing in Wisconsin. Uh, the tight end, C.J. Dupree, was at Maryland. He played there a couple years ago. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of coaches as well, you know, with this coaching staff being new, uh, that have come from schools like Michigan State, uh, Purdue, you know, Kalen DeBoer himself is, is an upper Midwestern guy. So I think there's a, a certain element of familiarity that, you know, it's not also going to be a, a weather game either. So it's not like the coaches have to stand in front of players and say it's going to be 30 degrees outside and, uh, you know, you have to worry about that. It's, it's going to be pretty normal weather. Um, and so it's just really the crowd. And a lot of these players at Alabama have played in SEC stadiums. They, they won at Texas A&M last year. They had a hard fought game at Auburn. Uh, the players that are here two years ago played at Tennessee and LSU. And uh, quite frankly, those are bigger stadiums and, and really tough environments. So I don't know if it will necessarily shock them. I think it's just the fact that it's different um, and that it's a pretty long road trip for them. It's a very good point. We can't just put a blanket statement over a team saying they haven't been when there's so many transfers and new people on staff. Chances are that one of those players has been to uh, <laughs> this uh, Camp Randall Stadium at some point. Speaking of players, let's talk about some of them. So Nick, you've got Tyler Van Dyke under center now. They're still feeding Chesma Lucy quite a bit. So how would you describe the identity of this Wisconsin offense early in this season? Yeah, Emily, I, I think really you're spot on uh, when you mentioned Chesma Lucy and the run game. Now, quite honestly, I don't think that this offense has necessarily found their exact identity. And I say that in a positive light. Uh, their first two opponents have been Western Michigan and South Dakota at home. So a couple teams that a little more methodical, a little more run game, slow paced much slower than you're going to see against an Alabama, a USC, some of these teams in the future. So while I think that Wisconsin's going to work this week towards opening things up and kind of demonstrating that run pass game, Van Dyke has had some opportunities, but really early on, it's been heavily run focused, a little bit slower paced, more methodical. I think you've seen some good things from Malusi. I'll mention Tawi Walker, the Oklahoma running back transfer. Uh, Cade Iacomelli is kind of one of these budding stars to look out for, redshirt sophomore running back. So the RBs have been very uh, focused and oriented so far. But I think you're going to see more of the wideouts like Will Pauling, Bryson Green, and like you mentioned, Tyler Van Dyke at QB really open things up against an offense and defense that the Tide possess from the SEC. Yeah, that's kind of what we have been waiting for from this Wisconsin offense. Uh, Mike, no box score scouting here at 24-7 Sports. We watched that Alabama game. What issues did USF potentially expose last week that need to be addressed this Saturday? 
Right, obviously a lot closer than the score <laughs> indicated at the end. It was a pretty tight game for three quarters. And the offensive line, I think, is really where it starts in terms of what you know, coaches are trying to fix this, this week, what fans are worried about. Um, that that was a big problem. Uh, there was three holding penalties on the right tackle, Will Conformby. There was multiple penalties on the left guard, uh, multiple penalties on the left tackle. And uh, Jalen Murrow was sacked three times for, for 36 yards. So there was, there were some issues. And you add in the running game, really for the first three quarters, did not look good. Um, they were averaging less than two yards a carry against a, a South Florida defense they should have done a lot better against. So that's that's where it starts. And um, they'll get more than likely Caden Proctor back at left tackle. That will allow Tyler Booker, who's probably a first-round pick next year, to move back to left guard. And then it's really just a question of what happens at right tackle, whether it's Will Conformby, who struggled last week, or Elijah Pritchett, who's a higher-ranked prospect, but uh, quite frankly was beaten by Formby in fall camp. Uh, which one of those two will start at right tackle is, is probably the biggest question entering this game for Alabama. Yeah, fantastic news if they are able to get Caden Proctor back. I'm pretty certain in saying that there is no video evidence of the last time this game was played in Madison. So we kind of created some virtual video. We simulated this game 20 times on EA College Football 25, and Alabama won it 14 of those times. So I want to hear from each team. But let's start with the virtual winners here, Mike. What is the biggest key to pulling out a win in this very real football game? I think it's just letting Alabama's talent shine through. I mean, this is the team that still has uh, num the number one ranking in, in 24-7 sports as talent composite, even after some of the losses that they've had this past offseason. And Wisconsin's 27th. Um, and so you need to put your best talent out there and let them win. And in this case, I think it, it starts with Ryan Williams, the wide receiver, uh, the freshman who is 17 years old, but already has three touchdowns this season and uh, well on his way to becoming one of the best wide receivers in college football. It, it continues with Jalen Milrow, who's one of the fastest quarterbacks on the planet. Um, and then there's a lot of talent on defense for Alabama, too. You have five star corners and five star safeties. And uh, there's there's players across the board for Alabama that, quite frankly, should be winning these matchups against Wisconsin. That doesn't happen. Uh, what looks like a, an advantage on paper doesn't always translate to something on the field. But just making sure that it does and, and allowing Alabama's talent to shine through, to me, is their biggest key to victory. Yeah, Mike, I, I think, you know, it's easy for me to kind of jump off of that point because for Wisconsin, my top key is is stopping or maybe I should say containing a star like Jalen Milrow. Uh, star safety Hunter Wohler for the Badgers called Milrow a top five QB in the nation. And I think he's a really good player. I, I think that was very complimentary. I believe he's got nine touchdowns and, and no interceptions so far, nine total touchdowns. So obviously he's likely going to get his, whether through the air or on the ground, but you've got to try to limit that. I think this is a major opportunity for some of the outside linebackers for Wisconsin. Uh, Daryl Peterson, Leon Lowry Jr., Aaron Witt. That's a major key for me. That's probably number one. And number two is just making the most of kind of the efficiency and execution within the red zone. I think that Wisconsin's actually moved the ball pretty well, fairly well so far this season. And again, I mentioned, I, I think they've still held some things back. So once you get inside that 15 in, in those three into six or seven, I think he's going to be paramount against the Kalen DeBoer-led offense that, as we know, has the talent like Mike mentioned and can score very, very quickly, Ken the Tide. Use that talent. Don't let that talent get used. We'll see what gives on Saturday. Thank you both so much for that breakdown. You can keep it locked in to Bama 24-7 for all things Alabama football and Badger 24-7 for everything you need to know about Wisconsin. These two writers you just heard from and their entire crew will have you covered all season long. Thank <laughs> you.